Hello, my name is Michael Smith, and today I'm going to be your CAD instructor. My goal here is to get you to the point where you can build up this small assembly right here, which is an extruder unit for a 3D printer. The first things that I'm going to cover in this class is how to get into a project and start to organize your files. From there, we're going to talk about the fundamentals of sketching and starting to work with features, building up the complexity as we make a few parts. Going a little bit beyond that, we're going to start to work with external reference geometry, finding it on the internet, looking at some drawings, and bringing it into our design environment. One such example that we'll be covering here is the NEMA 17 stepper motor. We'll actually be looking up the drawing for this and then recreating it here inside of CAD. But we don't want to remodel this over and over and over again if we have different model sizes. So we're going to be going through how to set up parameters so that we can very quickly go inside of here, capture what we need to capture, and then make a nice fast table that we can adjust in the case that we need to make a smaller motor. Just like so. Finally, we'll take all of these different components and bring them together in an assembly like this. You can also find step slides linked in the description below. These are simply just each step with a very simple description of what's happening. So once you've learned this, you'll have a great foundation in order to build from. There's many things that can be solved by just building a couple of parts and bringing them together in a small assembly. However, to put this into context, this is the first level of a five level class that I've built where we design this large 3D printer here. Now this class in its full extent is really designed for, let's say an engineering student or somebody who has a need for much more complex designs inside of Fusion 360. And if that sounds interesting to you, then once you've completed this class, you can actually take everything that we've done here and then continue to roll it into more advanced training. So if you're ready to get started, then let's set up our project folder. However, if you don't have Fusion 360 installed yet, then pause the video here and look for the link in the description below or kind of noted in the card in the top right of the video. And I'll talk you through of how to get Fusion 360 set up on your computer. Without further ado, let's move into the first lesson. Welcome to Fusion 360. Let's go ahead and get the project set up for our tutorial. If you don't see this over here on the left, then you'll probably have to click on the show data panel. What I want you to do is click a new project, give it a fitting name, and then press enter. So you should see that you have a project over here on the left. The thing that I like to do here is make sure that we pin this project, that way we don't lose track of it. If you take a look at all projects down here, you can filter by pinned, and therefore we can keep an eye on it. Inside of our project folder, by double clicking on it, you can see all of our files and new folders that we're going to create inside of here. Go ahead and click on the new folder and name this purchase parts. All right, the next thing I want you to do is come up to your name in the top right, left click on that and go down to preferences. The first preference I want you to set up here is under pan, zoom, and orbit. I like to use SolidWorks because that's the other software that I work with. So therefore keeping the pan and zoom and all that consistent is very important to me. I also definitely prefer it over the fusion default. The second thing I want you to do is set the default orbit type to constrained orbit. The last thing I want you to do is to go under default units, go down to design and make sure that this is selected on millimeters and then click OK. So that's all we needed to do in order to get this project set up. If we were to save a part that we have open right now, you can see that it's going to go into our file location that we are in currently over here under the data panel. So if I click save on this, this should show up right here. Let me go ahead and navigate to a project that has a lot more parts inside of it. So if I go to the tutorial folder that I'm currently working on right now, you can see that there's a ton of parts inside of here. And there's many purchase parts that I've uploaded as I've gone through my own tutorial. Another way to view this same sort of file structure here is to use this little globe with an eyeball next to it. This opens up my hub, and since all the files are stored on the cloud, I can access them here. This is a much more traditional file folder structure with a lot of other enhancements. So for example, if I were to go here and I were to click on the B delta rod end, I can get some more information out of this. I can see what version I've created right here. I've only done one thus far. Where it's used, it's used inside of the assembly here, version three. If there's any drawings for it, and I can do other things like export this or share it with other team members. And I can even go over here and say open on desktop if I wanted to. So if I click this button and go like that, we should see the file open right here on my desktop. 
One final way you can look through all of your files is to just go down over here to open and then navigate through your projects and then the subfolders and ultimately to the files and go from there. Or if you have them on your computer, you can do open from my computer. All right, so now we have everything set up and we know how to navigate the file folders. We can go ahead and start to create some parts. So let's move into the next tutorial.